That is not how we do inventory, but we're going to show you how to do it coming right up. Welcome back to Kit Fox Aircraft. I'm still Brandon. And I'm still Heather. Today, as promised, we're going to dive square into inventory. And we get a lot of compliments about our inventory and about uh, how we package our, our, our kits. A lot of times it just looks like a lot of boxes and, and where do I even begin? But we're going to break it down to where it's pretty simple and pretty easy. We're going to show you a couple of uh, boxes and how they're packed. And we're going to uh, jump right in right now. Although the inventory doesn't seem to be the glamorous part, uh, a lot of people get really excited to jump into the build and, and it's not as exciting as the actual build part, but the, imp uh, the important part about inventory is actually doing it and doing it up front. Our parts and packing department does an excellent job in paying attention to the details when they're packing your kit. But in case we do miss something, you do have 60 days to complete your inventory and let us know what might be missing. Inside the book, you'll actually find a, a list that you can uh, fill out. Hopefully most of it's blank, but then you can send that back to us and report anything that came up short in your inventory and we'll work with you on those items. It's a process that we've made pretty simple and efficient and once you get started on it, it's a pretty easy process to follow. For example, real quick, box number 12. And this is our adjustable rotor pedal kit. In the inventory manual, you'll actually find a corresponding page to the adjustable rotor pedal kit box. If there were multiple boxes, uh, you would have actually broken out in here where to find this part. It would be in, in box X or box Y. In this case, the adjustable rudder pedal kit, everything's in box 12. So as we open this up, everything gets individually labeled. So pulleys, for instance, each bag has a tag or each item will be tagged one way or another. That has a description, a part number, a quantity, and everything else. It's pretty easy to look at that, correlate it to the page in the manual, check off that you've got the pulleys, set them aside. Now, after we've got this all done, to bring back any memories, we can actually say, okay, we've checked off all these items against our list. What we would suggest is put them all back in that box so that everything's kitted in the box that it belongs to. You can close that back up or set it back on the shelf or do whatever you want with that box and it all stays very, very organized and you know that everything you need for those steps in the manual is, is there in that box, whether it's bolts, nuts, washers, uh, specialty, specialty items like the, uh, the pulleys, things like that. Sometimes there might be specialty items that we may end up drop shipping to you, for example, the windshield. There's instructions in here on how to receive that uh, when it comes to your home or your airport. And you can read through the instructions for sure so that you know how to accept that delivery and check it for any damages. But it'll be listed on the inventory sheet as a DS or a drop ship. And that just means that we're going to send it directly to you. It won't be with your kit, but it's coming. Um, some other things might be backordered items. Uh, once in a while, we send kits out without everything uh, because we might be waiting for a part to come in from another vendor. And we will go ahead and mark that on here as a back order. We keep track of that for you as well so that when those parts do come in, we're going to put them in a box and ship them out to you as soon as we can so that you can keep your build going. There are items in your kit that may be temperature sensitive. An example of that would be the high saw. In that case, you want to, uh, if you have a place that you can take that and put that inside, that would be a good idea just to help keep that temperature stable uh, instead of leaving it in a cold hangar or a cold shop or a cold garage. Uh, those things should be kept at a, a nominal temperature and you can take them out when you're using them, put them back in the house, whatever, um, and just be aware of those things in the kit as you go. Nuts and bolts, they don't care if they're hot or cold, they'll be fine. Although the bulk of everything is packed nicely in boxes, you are going to have some loose items, such as your glare shield, your, your doors, uh, door, sorry, door frames, wingtips, the seat. Mm -hmm. They just don't pack well, and so you're going to have those kind of in odd places. Do keep track of those things and uh, don't lose them in a move, for instance. Uh, don't put them up in Granny's attic in the U-Haul truck and, and lose track of them. Another example of items that won't fit into boxes would be this bundle here, this is going to be your uh, elevator and some of your longer push-pull tubes, the jury struts. So some of those things are wrapped in this bundle and that'll all be listed on your powder coat list, which is a separate inventory sheet as well. One thing I already mentioned was to leave the components for each individual box in the box so you know where to go get it later. That's one way to do it. You know, you don't have to do it that way. 
uh, there's builders out there that have gone and taken all their hardware. They'll, they'll group all the AN35s, 6s, 7s, 12s, 22s, 24s, 37s, and they'll put them individually in a compartmentalized box. They'll take everything and put it on in a cubby. They'll just, you know, come up with their own way to do it. Do what works for you. That's really the important message here is you organize it the way you want to work out of it. Here at the factory, we're really spoiled. We just go to the parts room and get exactly <laughs> what we need every time, and it's, it's pretty fancy that way. But spoiled. Uh, you know, there's a couple other ways of doing it. We've had guys uh, go and put pegboards together. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. And I think we should actually take a field trip and uh, go on the road. Yeah. Let's take a ride. And we have a builder locally who's uh, come up with a couple of different systems, and I think we should go take a look at it. I love it. All right. Let's show them. Follow along. Let's go. Hard at it. How you doing, buddy boy? How's it going, man? Good, good to see you. Well, everybody, this is Evan Brunier, and he's got quite a bit of experience building so far with slings. And then I got a couple of kit boxes under your belt now. One for yourself, and yep. one that you're doing some commercial assistance on with avionics install covering and some uh, finishing touches like that. So that's right. Um, wanted to visit with you a little bit about your inventory system and how you've You've kind of done a couple of different methods here and um, just have you talk us through what's working for you and, and how you've organized your, your parts for your kit boxes. Yeah, so, you know, the first thing that you're going to want to do, you know, you're going to get all your boxes of parts and then, of course, you're going to want to inventory, make sure everything's there that you need. And if we look over here, um, as we pull the parts from the boxes and inventory them, uh, we put them up on this wall here. And so, just using a pegboard and yeah it's just a pegboard with regular peg hooks uh, really inexpensive it would fit in a garage or anywhere this is just two four by eight sheets and it fits all of the components uh, fairly easily anyway as you pull them out of the boxes and inventory you just put them up and these are sectioned off so you know each box gets its own section i do wish it was a little bit more evenly divided but you get the idea <laughs> um, and so then we just put everything up there and you start to you know get organized and prep for your project. And one thing that's you know really, really kind of, I think it's important is as you're inventorying, kind of get a handle on the part, start to familiarize yourself with all the little uh, specialty parts and components that you're gonna get and put them up on the wall and then you know where they are when they come up in the manual. Um, Smart. And then as, as you get through this a little bit more and you start to reduce the uh, number of parts on your board, uh, we kind of transitioned to an arrangement, something more like this over here. And uh, of course, you don't need two separate pegboard sections. Uh, you could just redo it on the same section. Um, but what you see here is basically uh, wing components on the far left, uh, fuselage components in the center, and then firewall forward components here on the right. Um, and then we try to keep it organized kind of, you know, hardware components here, um, some electrical and some tubing there, and then all the kits left in their bags, all the labels left on everything. Um, and some of these are, you know, components that have uh, modification left to do to get them installed. Leaving them labeled is probably uh, an important aspect so that you can find them later. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> some of the stuff I'm seeing here, you're actually not going to use until the very end of the project. So, you know, Fuel line, for instance, that, that's going to come in final assembly when the wings go on and your, your plumbing tanks down to your header tank. So, you know, having it organized like this, you know, you can always come back to it. It's, Certainly. It's and, and having everything on the board, whether or not you're going to use it today or in six months, um, you don't have anything stashed in boxes and have to try to remember which box or where you put it and things like that. Gotcha. Yeah. So. And hardware? I see some. Yeah, so the specialty AN hardware, maybe the real long bolts or anything drilled, um, things like that are up here. Um, but I do keep all the AN hardware in uh, boxes. So standard AN 3, 4, and 5 hardware uh, just gets its own box. An AN bolt's an AN bolt, so might as well uh, keep it organized, right? So 
a undrilled standard AN. We've got uh, the thick washers, the thin washers, nylocks, everything's just right here. Um, and that just kind of keeps it easier. It keeps the, the volume on the pegboard down a little bit uh, for me. So it almost seems like you've got a little bit of a hybrid of what we've discussed previously in the video, which is, you know, containering the, the AN hardware that's all the same and then kind of organizing parts in, in kits, mostly over on that board there, you had them organized in kits, the way they came out of the box, and then here it just seems to be then bulk. Yeah, and, and you know, firewall wings and as you're kind of building through from that uh, setup over there, you really start to get familiarized with each part and what it is and everything, so then you can find an organization that works better for you. Sure. To, uh, Almost evolves as you go. Exactly, yeah. yep. And I love how you've got this organized over here. <clears throat> it looks like you've got some, uh, you know, lighting and ELTs and things that you've ordered ahead of time, which is a great idea. But yep. uh, even some of the wood parts, you know, extra false ribs, things like that, uh, all organized kind of in sections again. So exactly, you know, yeah. Good covering stuff. If you uh, option for the polyfiber system, which is what we include in the kit, you know, you'll get chemicals and covering and tapes and things like that with the initial kit. So. Uh, keep those organized and uh, another case where we talked about keeping the high saw warm You'd want to keep those chemicals fairly stable in temperature, uh, especially the closer you get to using them Yep, cool. all, all of this stuff, you know pegboard these wire racks. It's all inexpensive and readily available at the hardware store So yeah. kind of makes things easy. Yeah, yeah. You've got a uh, beautiful shop well lit clean important organized uh, walk us through a little bit about uh, how you've kind of built the kit foxes so far and maybe some of the things you like about the kit fox yeah so i mean honestly the kit fox is a is a awesome build process one of the things that i like the most about it is you can build almost the entire way through with kind of what you've likely already got in your garage um, kind of a simple set of tools you don't need anything too too specialized to do it um, and then once you get to the fabric that's just absolutely the most fun part of the project watching that fabric shrink up with the iron and <laughs> take shape onto the, the yeah, frame yeah. yeah it all starts to you know all of a sudden you've come from a frame to an airplane looking thing so, so coming from the all aluminum monocoque side of things were you intimidated by the fabric mm, well no i mean you hear horror stories and things but you know if you do your research you know look it up on youtube talk to guys like the expert right here um, and things like that you know it's it's more daunting than it is actually hard okay. I think okay. yeah I've always said follow the steps yeah you know if you just follow the process it, it all comes together in the end and a lot of it can be fixed as long as you haven't painted it so yeah once you paint it it gets a little harder to fix but everything you know up to that point can be released and reset and patched and taped and, and really uh, very forgiving process yeah don't worry too much about making a mistake. You can definitely fix it. Yeah, a lot of that can be overcome. Cool. Yep. Cool. Not saying I've ever made a mistake, but you know. <laughs> it's been known to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you uh, giving us a walk around and, and showing us how you do the inventory and the build process. And, and uh, we may visit you again as we, as we go through our build process. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. All right. That and was we're, fun. And we're back. So thank you, Devin, for his time. We appreciate him being involved in the video and, and kind of showing us what he does there. Uh, one thing we ought to mention, too, is there, there's a few different ways that you can receive the kit. If you're an international shipment, you will receive a gigantic crate. It's uh, four feet wide. It's seven and a half feet tall, and it's uh, 17 to 19 feet long, depending on what you've ordered. And uh, everything's going to be packaged um, in its completeness. So you'll have a lot of little boxes that we play Tetris and we put the whole, the whole crate together that way. And, uh, and then you get to unpack the whole crate. Uh, in the case of a specialty shipper, it would come to you on a truck. You wanna explain how that is? If you live in the lower 48 states, one of your options for receiving your kit is going to be to have a specialty shipper bring it to you. It's a semi truck that comes right to your house or your airport, wherever you wanna have it delivered. And they will um, have your fuselage, your wings, and then a giant box that's gonna have all these small boxes inside of it. Um, you will still have some loose items in there like the wing tips, uh, the tail feathers, your seat for example, things like that. But for, mo for the most part, everything's pretty condensed and, and put in one big box. They're also a specialty shipper and so they, they are used to working with high-end cars and airplanes, so they take great care of your stuff and do a really good job. 
The last thing that we want to talk about is the uh, option of you picking up at the factory. We do have some people that uh, fly out, they'll rent a truck, we'll help them pack it here at the factory, yep. and then you get to drive it home. And we've had people from all over the country take that option. We only recommend budget trucks, <laughs> and for lots of reasons. But the blankets the budget offers uh, just pack a whole lot better and they work a whole lot better. And all you need is a 16-foot budget truck, which is usually a little more economical. Yeah, and it's really fast because we have such a good system for that that it goes really smooth. That's true. Good point. All right, everybody, thank you for sticking with us through the inventory portion of this video. We know it's a little mundane and not real exciting, but it is an important part of the build that happens early on. Uh, we're pretty pumped to get to the next step, which is actually working on a physical airplane. That's right. <laughs> so uh, we've actually decided to start our build where the manual would have you start. In the next video, we'll cover some of the things that uh, the manual helps get you rolling down the road. But we're going to start by rigging the horizontal and the elevator to the fuselage, which is going to lead us to prepping for bonding. We're also going to talk about the high saw and working with high saw and some of the tips and tricks for working with a structural adhesive. And then we also have working with aircraft grade plywood and how that goes and what some of the tips are there. That'll naturally lead us straight to varnishing that plywood and ultimately covering and through some of the spray coats. And the covering is the part I'm excited about. So it gives us a chance to really focus on a handful of the aspects of the build in a very short period of time. So come join us, stick with us, uh, come see the next video. We're going to get to it as quick as we can, and we'll keep things rolling for you. In the meantime, uh, let's build a kit box. Yeah. See you guys. Are they still here? Hello? Is somebody out there? Go home. Cool. Why are you still here? Get your kit box ordered. <laughs>